Today we thought we'd take this time just to kind of talk a little bit about camera gear on the road and for, for traveling and uh, what kind of some of the things that we use and what we might recommend for somebody who also wants to document their travels or, um, or film while traveling. So first of all, don't feel like you have to go out and buy a new camera and get some fancy stuff because you probably already have a pretty decent video camera and photo camera right in your phone. Yeah, we actually film a lot on our phones um, and I, I think that a lot of other traveling people do because it's just it's so convenient. Uh, convenience and portability is, is really the number one key when you're traveling. So um, utilizing a camera, your camera on your phone, it's a lot of times they're really good. I mean, the, the iPhones and even a lot of the Androids take fantastic video, so there's nothing wrong with that. If you want to take it up a notch, um, we don't do it, but a lot of our friends use stabilizers. They'll actually put the phone in a stabilizer and walk around with that so you get nice, smooth video right from your phone. It's just so convenient and easy. So when we started out, we actually already had a video camera that we decided to take on the road with us. It's this little guy, and I think I got this for Christmas one year when I was in college, and uh, now we've pretty much beat it up really bad. It's got scratches everywhere, but it's just an easy, um, small little camera that's uh, fun to take with us and there's a couple of benefits that we get from this. It's just a it's just a, a handy Sony Handycam camcorder. The benefits that you get of this over using your phone is uh, there's stabilization in this um, so y you can see that in a lot of phones as well but there's pretty good stabilization in it so just walking around with it video is a little bit better and enormous zoom. Uh, the drawback to this camera is that it doesn't really have any external ports. We can't plug any additional microphones into it. Um, the video quality is just not all that great either compared to <laughs> some other things. So, But we still film a lot on it just because it's so convenient. It's yeah. so small, such good zoom. Um, and it, and we're not afraid of getting it all beat up. <laughs> exactly. So if you kind of want to take your video to the next step, small camcorder type thing actually is, a, is not a bad idea to take with you. Another benefit is that it's just a dedicated video recorder, so you're not going to be taking up a whole lot of space on your phone um, that you might be using for other things. It's all just on this. It's its own separate entity. So the next step up in cameras, and uh, the camera that we shot most of our video on previously was, was this. It's a DSLR style camera, and the DSLRs um, are really great for taking pictures and people found them really great for taking video as well if you want to try to mimic kind of that cinematic feel. The real beauty of the DSLRs is you get a really nice shallow depth of field. You can blur out the background because they have very large sensors in them. We shot a lot of video on uh, this little Sony NEX series camera um, and they, they do take beautiful video, but there are serious drawbacks to them as well. Um, they're larger, clunkier, heavier, uh, a lot of times they don't have a lot of the capabilities of a camcorder type video like uh, power zoom and things like that. You have to deal with multiple lenses. There's usually a lot of stuff to take along and if you want to turn it into a good video camera, you got to add a whole bunch of crap to it which makes it kind of difficult to take with you everywhere you go. And this is the one that started flaking out. Um, I mean, I've, I've dropped it a few times which probably wasn't very good. Um, but we also started having overheating issues if we left it on too long. Doing a video shoot like this wasn't as easy. Yeah, that's very common among DSLRs. They're not designed to take video primarily. They're designed to take pictures. They, on a, a byproduct, they take beautiful video. And this one did the same thing but the overheating issue, it would overheat in about 20 minutes. So sitting here doing an interview, it, very inconvenient to have to turn it off, wait for it to cool down, et cetera, et cetera. The camera we're filming on now can shoot for six hours continuously with the battery we've got on it. So that makes things really convenient for us. So benefit to having a DSLR camera like this is if you're not so into the videos and stuff, this might be the way to go if you're really looking for gorgeous photos. You can do a lot with these, like this actually had programming in it where you can do a lot of really cool um, effects to the shots as you're taking it, you know, no Photoshop required. Um, and we've gotten some amazing pictures from this. And I guess in in comparison to other DSLRs, this is a relatively small one, so we were able to take it to a lot of places and get some amazing pictures. So the next thing in our camera bag is some action cams. This is just a GoPro camera. We've got a handful of different types that we take with us. They're convenient to have because they're less likely to break when they're in their nice cases, waterproof. They can go just about anywhere with us. This one has been swimming with the manatees. It's been playing in the ocean. It's been uh, flown up in the air. So it goes everywhere with us and we can get some amazing stuff. 
Drawbacks to these are, uh, you know, a lot of times they're fixed lenses. You don't have any zoom capability. They're very wide field of view, which is nice to capture action shots and moving shots and things like that. But um, they're just uh, they're just convenient to have along. You know, you just we just throw it in the bag almost any time we go anywhere, and it's just easy. Pull it out, take some video. Another camera that you may consider adding to your gear before you hit the road or as you're on the road, if you don't have one yet, um, is a dash camera. Uh, we've got one for we just recently got one in the last few months for a couple of reasons. One to document where we were driving because I mean you drive through some amazing scenery, and two for the safety aspect. The dash camera just comes on every time we start the truck and it records all the time. So that footage is available and all we got to do is just pull it down uh, and it's it's always there. So it's, it's really convenient to just have that footage. We use it a lot in our travel videos and it's fun to just document uh, document where you've been. Of course it records enormous amounts of time so you have to pick where which segments you want. And but, grab it before it rewrites over it. Yeah, because it, it is designed to record all the time and it writes over the original files. So it, ours will record for about eight hours. So all we have to do, we have to grab footage within the last eight hours that we've been driving. And uh, we, we'll use it in our videos and stuff. I'm sure you'll see plenty of it in the future. And uh, yeah, kind of neat. If you want to know what dash camera we use, we actually did do a review video on it for our other channel, Road Gear Reviews. Uh, so you can go check that out and uh, see if that's something that you would be interested in adding. Another camera you might want to consider when traveling, and a lot of people do, is uh, taking a, a drone or an aerial camera with you. And uh, this is something that we actually upgraded or changed recently. We, we, we used to fly the uh, Phantom 3 uh, drone around a lot and we just upgraded to the Mavic here uh, and we upgraded to it primarily because of the portability it's so small and easy to take with you and um, we do quite a bit of flying just to get a sense of an area and get some really nice establishing shots of where you've been drones are really great to have along but there's a lot of legalities and concerns that you have to know about before actually taking it with you traveling there's a lot of limitations you can't fly within five miles of an airport um, if you're going to do it commercially, you technically need a remote pilot operator's license, which you need to obtain by taking tests from the FAA, and a whole bunch of other legalities like not flying over 400 feet or outside of line of sight. Lots and lots of things you need to know before taking one of these with you. But if you follow the rules, you can get some amazing footage everywhere you travel. Fun side note, we used to have the Phantom 3 Pro and we recently sold that to RV Love. Mark and Julie now have a drone so uh, we're really super excited for them uh, and to see what footage they ca capture in their travels. I'm super excited about this thing. This is what it looks like. It's just this tiny tiny little craft but this one specifically folds up so it's it's really great for travel. Um, but these things, uh, they're they're pretty expensive they can be crashed pretty easily and uh, they're relatively delicate so um, <laughs> as of the time this video was shot um, some of these they might not be right for you but I'm sure that they're gonna get more robust in the future and um, even easier to take with you but uh, definitely something worth thinking about having in your travel bag. So if you want to take your video to the next step, what we would probably recommend is emphasizing uh, you know, not so much on upgrading your cameras and the look of your video and photos, but actually the sound. Sound is very difficult to get right in videos. Like today it's it's very windy, so I'm hoping we're not having any wind noise yeah, right now. <laughs> but we um we, we really try to focus on getting the sound right because it's really annoying when you've got really good looking video but the sound just isn't there. Mm -hmm. So um, we have an external uh, audio recorder that a lot of times we will put on somebody and have a lapel on them if we're, if we're really trying to capture good audio. We do have some wireless lapel yep, as that well. that was a recent upgrade. That we, uh, we can add into our, our camera that we're filming on right now. Um, there's a lot of things you can do to improve sound and uh, that's definitely I'd say the, the next step and then going beyond that would be uh, something like what we're filming on right now which is a higher end camcorder and higher end camcorders can get very expensive um, but they have a lot of functionality now you're really kind of talking more professional video type of stuff. Like Tom said, they can be kind of expensive, but we happen to find a really good deal on a used one. So it really worked out for us. Another piece of gear that's really important uh, to upgrade is a, is a tripod. Um, tripods come in all varieties of qualities 
and uh, that's something that I think we need to upgrade here soon. Actually, yeah, we're, um, we're wa in the wind. We're watching the camera kind of wobble right there. You might it's uh, our camera's <laughs> heavier now, so uh, we need a beefier tripod. Yeah. Uh, tripods are really important if you want to capture. If you want to go more professional in video, it's good to have a tripod with a nice fluid pan head, which resists the movement of the camera, so that you can get really nice, nice pans nice and shots. and movements of the camera. Um, and tripods can be quite portable, but they can also be quite heavy when you have a heavier camera. So again, you know, portability and what fits your traveling style is what is going to yield the best video because you're going to take it with you. Yep. And uh, like we said at the beginning, you do not need to go that fancy at all unless you really want to take it to the next level. We started out with basically what we had um, and now after a year and a half we've upgraded cameras and our drones because this is something that we really want to pursue and, and keep doing. So that it's worth the investment to us, but if, if you're not going to be taking it to this level there is really no need to to get anything really fancy your phone is probably going to be your best camera because you're always going to have it on you yeah this uh, the camera that we're filming on right now it's it's really more for for interviews static shot type of things we're not going to be taking it everywhere with us we're still going to be using our our other cameras because they're more portable and convenient so that wraps up our discussion on our camera viewer. We'd love to hear what's in your camera bag. And as always, if you have any questions or comments or would like to hear more about some of our travels and such, let us know what you would like us to do these videos on. We are so happy to be back with Mondays with the Mortons. We missed you all, and we are excited to see you again next Monday on another Mondays with the Mortons. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next week. Bye.